If it wasn't already clear, then it surely is now that your habits play a pivotal role in the quality of your life, and so it's in your best interest to build positive habits and routines. In this video, you're going to learn exactly that with the use of if then habits, where we'll look at a little about the science behind them, learn the techniques of how to use them, and I'll be using the example of Thomas Frank to help understand how to set yourself up to apply them. Thomas is one of my favourite YouTube creators when it comes to the subject of productivity, and well worth following if you don't already. I will be linking his video on if then habits along with his channel down in the description, so please do consider checking out his content if you haven't already. Now, let's understand what if then habits are. To give them their formal name, if then habits are known as implementation intention having come to prominence from psychology professor Peter Golwitzer, who performed a study where he asked students to mail an assignment two days before Christmas, one group being given no specific instruction, whereas the other group was asked to create specific if-then statements, in which they specified when they would mail it, where they would mail it, and how they would mail it. The results were staggering, as only 32% of students from the first group mailed in their assignments. However, from the group that created the if-then statements, 72% followed through. This goes to show the importance of clearly setting up rules when forming habits, giving yourself clear reasons and methods to help you follow through with completing a task. So how are if-then statements formed? Well, they commonly follow the same sort of structure as if statements used in pretty much every coding language. You start off with a conditional statement, the if part which if true leads to an action, which is the then element of the statement. So for example, a simple if then habit statement might be, if I've been working for 30 minutes, then I'll take a 5 minute break to walk away from my desk. Another if statement would be, if I like this video, then I'll leave a like. This might be one you might want to try implementing now. But why are if statements so useful? In effect, this works because we're hardwiring our brain to follow simple, task-based rules to build positive habits. You see, your brain processes thoughts using two networks, the narrative network and the direct experience network. The narrative network is the default network with which we operate, it's the stories we tell about ourselves, those around us and our circumstances. It will focus more on our feelings, drawing from our past experiences and the possible future. Instead, the direct experience network is much more grounded in the present moment via our senses and simply focuses on the task at hand. Researchers found that those who are able to actively identify their default network and implement actions based on direct experience network as their default were much more likely to follow through when doing what they intended to do. Put simply, if you set up clear rules for yourself, it'll help you focus on the present and control your emotions, eventually leading to you following through with what you intend to do. For this reason, if then habit building can be valuable in building positive and lasting habits, because you wire your brain to automatically complete them based on simple but effective rules. Going back to Thomas Frank, he takes this a step further, as he doesn't just build if then statements, but then sets up his environment to help him follow through. One example he gives in his video is he has a pull-up bar in his office doorway. If he walks into his office, he does 5 pull-ups, as you can see in this clip. I've implemented this myself, putting a skipping rope next to my shoes so that if I put my shoes on to walk outside, then I'll do some skipping to get some exercise. These simple environmental changes remove hesitation to complete the task. So now that we understand why if-then statements are useful, Let's look at how to apply the implementation intention logic. First, you want to identify what habits you want to build. I'd suggest identifying why you want to do this, so that you clearly understand the benefits of following through. Once you've identified your habit, write down your if then rule. Ideally, try and specify when, where and how you're going to implement the rule. For example, going back to the if then statement I gave earlier. If I've been working for 30 minutes, then I'll take a 5 minute break to walk, away from my desk. I clarify when I'll take a break, after 30 minutes of work, where I'll take the break, which is away from my desk, and how I'll take the break, which is I'll use it to walk and therefore get some steps in. From here, where possible, set up your environment to help you complete the if-then rule. 
For my example of walking during breaks, I ensure I keep my room clean and clear space to ensure I have room to walk around. Also, as mentioned above, the simple act of keeping a skipping rope near my shoes means I'll be more likely to do some skipping when I want to put the shoes on. We've already covered the example of the pull-up bar with Thomas, but another if-then rule that he's set up is to do push-ups when he wakes up. To aid this, he keeps his alarm under a coffee table, meaning he has to get down on his knees to turn it off and therefore is already set to start doing the push-ups, a simple but highly effective method to ensure that he builds this habit. So give it a try and implement your own if-then rules to build positive habits. Doing so can enrich the quality of your life.